This is News Watch 7 at 9 on MeTV Omaha. Good evening and Merry Christmas. I'm Joey Savchik. Here's what's happening right now. A massive winter storm continues to wreak havoc on the U.S. At least 34 people have died across the country, many of them in New York State, where officials call this a once in a generation blizzard. Plus, water woes put some metro residents out of their homes on Christmas Day. MUD says it's working with maintenance to fix pipe problems at one apartment complex, while flooding has been reported by residents at at least three other buildings across town. And Omaha's Jewish community spends the holiday giving back. Operation Grateful Goodies gives first responders and healthcare heroes something special this holiday weekend. Live from 7 Burlington Station, this is Omaha's news leader. News Watch 7 on MeTV Omaha at 9 p.m. First tonight, a live look at Midtown Crossing from our Skycam at 27th and Douglas. Weather Now Chief Meteorologist Bill Ramby is here with the upfront forecast. Joey, yeah, I mean, it's been so cold. What a brutal weekend, but temperatures have moderated a little bit here this evening. We've got some clouds over the area. We're going to get a little bit of light snow overnight and then a very strong cold front to come through. That's a live look from our camera at 72nd and Crown Point. You see it's cloudy. We're now up to 21 degrees. We haven't seen that in a number of days. It feels like it's 9 with a south breeze at 11 miles an hour. Temperatures in the teens in western Iowa, but 26 in Fremont and Columbus and 38 in Norfolk. It feels like is in the single digits from Omaha into western Iowa with just that south breeze that's blowing, but we're briefly going to moderate over the next several hours. A couple of snow showers up between Missouri Valley and Harlan. And you see the little area of snow that moved through this morning. We're waiting for another batch to move down from South Dakota later on tonight. That's along a very strong cold front that will whip through and bring us a windy and very cold Monday, which we're getting used to. Then milder temperatures returning this week. There's the 12 hour. Wind chills will be down below zero, I think, by 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11 o'clock in the morning. Joey. Bill, thanks. Plumbing problems at multiple metro apartment complexes leave residents without water or wading through flooded floors on Christmas Day. MUD confirms it's working with management to fix the issues at a building on Cottonwood Plaza and 108th. It also says there have been reports of water woes with at least two other complexes. MUD blames burst pipes in the cold. We speak to one woman who says the issues leave her high, though not dry, and out of her home for the holiday. Christmas spirits dampened by burst pipes at apartment complexes across the metro. And the water starts coming through the guest bedroom ceiling. On Christmas Eve, Kathleen Kanopic evacuated her apartment at Orchard Manor with her dog and her meds, feeling left out to dry. I'm disabled and I, uh, I had a really hard time getting out and I was scared out of my mind and the dog was freaked out. The Metropolitan Utilities District explains building maintenance is in charge of shutting off the water when a pipe breaks. If they don't respond, MUD steps in, they say, to prevent further damage. Hi, this is Joey Safchik. I'm a reporter with KETV. We've heard that there were some issues with the pipe bursting. We called MP Dodge, which owns Orchard Manor. We were able to reach the emergency maintenance team who says they can't comment. The water's pouring on the bed in the guest room and everything in the bedroom was soaking wet in the dresser on the floor. At Omaha Housing Authority's Benson Tower, there's no water, according to resident Stephanie Ekstrom. OHA did not answer our call on Christmas Day. We haven't had water in 48 hours. There are people here who have multiple people sharing one bathroom where the toilet no longer flushes. And viewer video from Tudor Heights shows floors flooded, children's toys damp and damaged. Back at Benson Tower. Our, our, our maintenance is saying that sometime after Monday. So that's, what, three days? With freezing weather, it's often a question not of whether pipes will burst, but when. MUD recommends letting water trickle from the faucet. Management said that there's problems like this all over Omaha, so please be patient. Just a complete mess. If you have a water emergency and need to reach MUD, you can call its emergency line. That number is 402-554-7777. It's free and open 24-7. 
You can also call this number for gas or carbon monoxide emergencies, but MUD advises you to leave the building or area first in those instances. Right now, Douglas County deputies search for a woman who disappeared days before Christmas. Investigators say 55 year old Monica Helm was last seen Thursday around her home near 93rd and Reddick Avenue. She's known to drive a gray 2009 Hyundai Sonata with Nebraska license plate WZI 988. If you see her or know where she is, call the tip line at 402-444-6000. Many first responders spend their holiday away from family, but Omaha's Jewish community makes sure firefighters and healthcare workers have something special to celebrate today. As we look forward to the new year, Newswatch 7 at 9's Abby Peterson tells us how Operation Grateful Goodies is all about giving back. Those Grateful Goodies boxes were taken to over 112 locations throughout the city, and organizers tell me they've been preparing for this day for over a month. Inside of Bethel Synagogue in Omaha, volunteers were busy loading up boxes and bags with goodies for other people. It's Christmas Day. Um, it's not our holiday, but everything's closed. So it's just an awesome opportunity to take advantage of being able to give back. Chairman Linda Saltzman says this is the fifth year and they're giving those goodies to anyone who helps or heals us. It's so well received. People are so appreciative when they gift the gift boxes. If you could just see the smiles on their faces, it's awesome. Among the families are new volunteers like the Habers. We uh, our time's not a good example for our daughter. We want her to understand that, you know, sometimes people have to sacrifice time away from their families to help others. First responders at an Omaha fire station were the first stop Sunday. Abby Haber says she's a teacher and she knows how it feels to be appreciated and how things like this go a long way. Thanks, Morgan. Yep, thank you. thank you. It was clear on the firefighters' faces how much they appreciated the gift, and yeah. little Morgan even got a little something so too. I was not expecting them, you know, to respond, to go all out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they do, they do a lot for everybody, so yeah. that was pretty awesome. She will not forget this, and I bet that hat will stick around for a while. Although this was the Habers' first year volunteering, they say they'll be back to volunteer for years to come. Abby Peterson, KETV Newswatch 7 at 9. Thanks, Abby. Governor Pete Ricketts issues his last Christmas statement as governor of Nebraska. The governor says he hopes Nebraskans get the chance to gather with family and loved ones. Ricketts also encourages people to remember those who preserve peace on earth. The governor goes on to recognize the men and women of our armed forces. He says, quote, we recognize that many of them won't be home for Christmas. It's their vigilance that ensures we can safely enjoy ours. We're grateful for their sacrifice and we pray daily for their safe return. Ricketts ends his Christmas message by asking all holiday travelers to drive safely and buckle up. Nebraska's governor-elect also wishing Nebraskans a Merry Christmas. On Twitter, Jim Pillen says, quote, This season reminds us that the greatest things in life are not money or power. The greatest thing in life is love. Love conquers all. A powerful moment in Ukraine's capital city as the war rages towards a new calendar year. People in Kyiv cheer as the capital's Christmas tree lights up. The tree was illuminated a week ago. Since then, it lights up every night in blue and yellow, the colors of Ukraine's national flag. There's been no respite from the fighting in Ukraine this holiday weekend, but some Ukrainian soldiers were able to find a few moments to celebrate. Vladimir Putin said in a state television interview today, Russia is ready for talks as dozens of missile strikes hit Ukraine. The Pope called for an end to that war in Ukraine in his annual Christmas message today. Pope Francis wished for world peace during the blessing delivered at the Vatican. He also condemned the use of starvation as a weapon and called on world leaders to help those suffering from hunger. Roughly 70,000 people packed St. Peter's Square for the holiday tradition. Next at 9, the death toll rises from the relentless winter storm. From flooding to frigid temperatures and heavy snow, millions are spending Christmas Day dealing with brutal weather. How it's impacting the electric grid, that's next. But first, as we go to break, some holiday messages from Nebraska military members. 
This is Specialist Turner from Bellevue, Nebraska. I just want to wish my family a Merry Christmas. Hello, I'm Staff Sergeant Nate Staskowitz from Omaha, Nebraska, stationed here at the Army Marksmanship Unit at Fort Benning, Georgia, wanting to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Hi, my name is Keaton Urick. I'm from Scottsbluff, Nebraska, and I just want to wish my family a very Merry Christmas. I can't wait to see you guys again when at graduation. Hi, I'm Airman Wright from Scottsbluff, Nebraska. I want to wish my family and friends a happy holidays. A brutal winter storm continues hitting much of the nation with heavy snow, strong winds and freezing cold temperatures. At least 34 people have died across the U.S. The storm has hit New York State the hardest. Conditions are so severe, it's the first time in the Buffalo Fire Department's history it could not respond to any calls. New York's governor is pleading with people to stay off the roads. We're endangering other people and it's frustrating because our state and county plows have been out there nonstop, giving up time and putting themselves in danger, driving through blinding snowstorms to clear the roads. They clear them, and now all of a sudden, because someone wanted to go out to the store, or just run and visit a friend, or take pictures of the snow, they are now stranded, and we have to expand our emergency operations, our rescue to them as well. New York's governor says the storm will likely be the most devastating in Buffalo's history. The Southwest Power Pool manages the electric grid for dozens of states, including Nebraska. It ended its conservative operations at noon today. The Omaha Public Power District said last week it was preparing for any possible power outages from the winter storm. But OPPD says it was not asked by the Southwest Power Pool to conserve energy. The Power District does have advice for customers who want to save energy and save some money. You can see those tips by going to OPPD.com slash EE. And if you or a loved one is flying out of Omaha, there's good news. Epley Airfield is now reporting nearly every flight is on time. But as always, you're encouraged to check with the airline before leaving home. 
Chief Meteorologist Bill Ramby is back with us now. Bill, is that weather helping people who are traveling? I think so. I mean, gosh, the, the huge cold front that plowed through here in the eastern part of the country has now mostly mostly moved away, so there's not any heavy rain or snow going on, but uh, you just hate to see delays this time of the year, and there were so many back before Christmas. Going forward, well, it's going to be really cold again tomorrow. I know we're used to it, but still, if you have to work outside, it's going to be a Ramby factor of four unpleasant for being and working outside today. High temperature 21 right now. That's the current temperature. We finally climbed above the teens four below zero this morning. We're still really cold relative to average and officially one one hundredth of an inch of precipitation today. There was some light snow that came through early this afternoon. That was with the leading edge of an Alberta Clipper that's zipping southward tonight and will bring us more cold, windy weather late tonight and early tomorrow morning. See the cloud layer here. That's the West Dodge Expressway camera at the Methodist Women's Hospital. 21 South Breeze at 11 feels like 9 relatively balmy, but what we've seen so far this holiday weekend. 18 Harlan Atlantic 38 now in Norfolk. The feels like the wind chill mostly in the single digits from Omaha into western Iowa, but with a little bit of a south and southwest breeze, I expect somewhat milder air to get pushed into Omaha over the next three, four hours. And then the north winds to blow and drop temperatures again. Couple little flurries showing up right here just north of Logan and not too far from Harlan. Those are dropping southeastward. And as you look at the nation's midsection, this is that little burst of snow we had early this afternoon. Southwest of us, there's a little sleep mixed in with that. But this is another little potent storm system. See the swirl right there? This is what we call an Alberta Clipper. Zipping out of western Canada down into the nation's midsection will pull down some more cold air and strong north winds overnight tonight. So impact icons there for late tonight, early tomorrow morning, where the wind chills will be 10 below zero or so and the air temperature only the single digits to around 10 degrees. There goes that storm by morning. The north winds are blowing here. Clouds early, but then sunshine for the afternoon. Little lighter winds late in the day. Tomorrow night we pick up a south breeze. So temperatures will start to rise overnight and then this milder air comes in from the west on Tuesday and we start warming up. Big change this week here. Seven for the low. That's going to be around eight or nine tomorrow morning. We're rising in the 20s right now. We'll get a little bit of light snow. Then it turns windy and cold. Cold day coming up with a northwest wind in the morning, sunshine and just mid teens in the afternoon. That's it for the high 37 though on Tuesday above freezing first time in a while. Then 43 for the high on Wednesday, 45 for the high on Thursday, 42 for the high on Friday. Mostly dry weather this week. Maybe a couple sprinkles Thursday, maybe a little bit of mixed precipitation sometime Friday night, early Saturday, but generally a big welcome relief. The extreme cold going away. An Alberta Clipper. Yes. Learn uh, something new every day. Zipping down in here tonight. And an appropriate tie. Thank you. <laughs> Trying hard. Thanks, Bill. Coming up in sports, Creighton basketball hosting DePaul for a rare Christmas showdown. The Blue Jays hoping for the gift of a win. Ellie French has a full recap straight ahead. But first, as we go to break, some holiday messages from Iowa military members. Hi, my name is Specialist Erica Ellsworth of 1133rd Transportation Company. I'm from Indianola, Iowa, and I'm wishing you a safe and happy holidays from Poets Poland. Hi, I'm Ethan Burkhalter. I am with the 380th EOSS calling home to say Merry Christmas to my mom, dad, brother, and sister back in Creston, Iowa.
was a Christmas day spent with the Jays. Great men's basketball hosting DePaul for a rare December 25th matchup. Now this was actually the first Big East men's basketball game to be held on Christmas Day, so an exciting opportunity for Creighton to be part of history. Now the Jays have played on Christmas Day once before, but that was way back in 1953 in a loss to Seattle. The current Creighton team hoping Santa Ana's reindeer would deliver them a win at home this holiday. It was a Merry Creighton Christmas at the CHI Health Center. The Blue Jays sporting their powder blue uniforms in a holiday showdown with the Paul. Early in the first, Arthur Kaluma with a kick out to Ryan Nemhard, and R2 is on the nice list. He sinks it from beyond the arc as the Jays take a 17-8 lead. Under 10 in the first half, the Jays with the gift exchange. Trey Alexander ends up with a wide open tray and makes DePaul pay. CU now leading by 10. Then Nemhard rocks around the Christmas tree and its defender finds Francisco Farabello who sinks the corner three pointer that would extend the Blue Jays lead to 12. Creighton entered the second half leading 39 to 28 and Alexander continued to make it reindeer from beyond the arc. This one his sixth, yes six of the night. The Blue Jays now up 53 to 37. So yes, Creighton made a lot of threes, but visions of points in the paint also danced in the Blue Jays heads. Baylor Shireman gets two on the driving layup. He finished with a double double of 14 points and 10 rebounds. Then later in the night, there arose such a clatter and fans turned their attention to see what was the matter. It was another three for Trey, who then ran out of sight saying Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Alexander finishing with a career high 32 points and career high made threes with seven as the Blue Jays get the gift of a win this Christmas. I think after what was it the third or the fourth three in the first half I was like my shots feeling really good so I mean R2 and my teammates were getting it to me in the right spots and I was just letting it go so they believed in me and I appreciate every single one of my teammates I couldn't do it without them so. When we got to shoot around today I had I, I didn't have any problem getting them focused. It was business as usual, and they understand, yes, we're playing on Christmas Day, but it's an important game for us, and, and we have to be focused. And, I, and I, was, I was really pleased with their preparation leading up to it. Once again, Creighton with a Christmas win, 80 to 65 the final. It's the Blue Jays 17th victory in a row over DePaul. They're now 2 and 1 in Big East play. They'll have a little over a week off before hosting Seton Hall on January 3rd. Tip off for that game set for 7:30 p.m. So Coach McDermott, he said he wasn't going to wear a holiday sweater for the Jays Christmas matchup, but no one asked him about the shoes. Look at them. Custom Nike dunks, I think. Different shades of blue. He's got some snowflakes in there. Snow falling down. Of course, you've got the Creighton logo on the back there. Joey, do you approve? Do we think Christmas Absolutely shoes are the new approve. thing? Yes, I want a pair. Yeah, aren't they cool? I know. Those are awesome. I know. So many good Christmas puns. Yes. Thank oh, you, thank Ellie. You. <laughs> and now a live look outside at Bayless Park. Your final forecast is coming up.
Welcome back. Bill, after this week, anything's going to feel like summer now. I know, I know. What a stretch here. Six days of really bitterly cold weather. Now, overnight tonight, another cold front. It's that Alberta clipper coming through. So strong north winds, sub-zero wind chills tomorrow morning, and a very cold start to the week. But tomorrow into Tuesday, temperatures start moderating and much milder the rest of the week. Bill, thank you. For local news on demand, check the KETV mobile app or KETV.com. We're back with more local news tomorrow, bright and early at 4.30 on KETV Newswatch 7. Happy holidays and have a great night.